So in college, the servants of the pierced hearts of Jesus and Mary actually called me dirt for years. Because apparently Adam means dirt or clay of the earth. So I think I'm fully qualified to make a video on humility. This is video from dirt to you. Let's go. All right, first video on the Joyful Mysteries, the Annunciation. Let's start with the very beginning, shall we? And the first Joyful Mystery here uh, is a beautiful story of how the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary. And let's jump right into the scripture. This is the Annunciation of the angel Gabriel to Mary. This comes from the book of Luke. And this is chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. Go ahead, and if you'd like, you could pause the video now and read. Awesome text on how Mary was fully willing to say yes to the Lord and the Lord's plan for her, even though she was not married. She was a young girl. People say 13 or 14. But I'd like to really zero in on that last line. I believe the verse 38 of, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. So the whole point of praying the rosary is to emulate this exact humility and this obedience that we're seeing from Mary in this line. And so the whole 10 Hail Mary beads, we can focus on Mary's words exactly as written in the text here. How can I say yes? How can I say fiat, thy will be done? See, humility is a funny thing because a lot of people just assume Humility is saying, I'm not going to brag about myself. I'm not going to say I'm the best at this or really talented. In the simplest terms I can put it, humility is acting in a way that lifts others up, that raises others to a higher honor or a higher standing. Remembering that the world is so much bigger than myself. Author C.S. Lewis says that humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. And Mary's response to the angel Gabriel when she says, thy will be done, not my will, perfectly illustrates this. Humility is seeing everything given to me as a gift. Every other person, every other opportunity, every job, Every moment is a gift. Every day that I wake up is a gift from God. The opposite, the vice, if you will, is pride. It's not seeing things as gift, seeing things as I am entitled to this. I am deserving of this. I cannot improve because I'm already at the top. There's no one outside of myself that can add to my own greatness. That's pride. For the rest of the video, let's talk about three acts of pride, and then we'll go into three reversals and how they can become acts of humility and then we'll close out with actually offering three tips on how you can move towards being more virtuous in this area of humility. So the first point of pride is the idea that when somebody praises you for doing something well that you have to deny that greatness of yourself and this is called false humility. This is when somebody says, hey, great job at the baseball game today, and you hit four home runs, and you're like, oh no, it wasn't that good, I can always do better, I was kind of off my game today. When that's clearly false, like you hit four home runs, that doesn't increase your level of humility to say you did poorly. In fact, that's lying to yourself, and that's actually lying to God by saying, no, the talent that you've bestowed on me was not real talent, it was a fluke, I failed you today. So the corresponding act of humility would then be to offer up that good deed, to say, praise God, thank you for telling me that I'm really good at baseball. Praise God uh, for your recognizing that goodness in me, and praise God for giving me that talent. Another act of pride is not sharing the spotlight, or not letting others step up to the plate, um, sorry for another baseball analogy, but not letting others lead. Uh, I, I see this all the time with people saying, I would like to be the leader of this prayer or of this group or this talk. And, and I do this all the time. I, I naturally want to step up and, and get after it. But it's a great act of humility to let other people serve and other people lead and let people serve you. To give people the chance to, even those who might be under you, I guess, in a position of leadership or superiority or um, hierarchy to let your underlings serve you. So we can go into conversations actually willing 
that other people might take the center stage, that other people might take the position of leadership, that other people might sit in the seat of honor. See, this is what Jesus did when he washed the feet of his apostles. He was saying to them, even though I am your teacher, I'm going to give myself to you. I can wash your feet. I can be of service to you. And as you will go and be the priests of my church, you will be serving those people who you are technically leading. You will be humble and you will wash their feet. Probably the most disgusting thing you could do for a person. The third act of pride is not letting others help you or not taking advice and saying that you're gonna go at it alone, but I'm gonna do it my way. I don't need your way. Now this is what Adam and Eve did in the garden, right? They said, God, I like what you're offering me, but I think we can go our way. The act of humility, of course, would be going into conversations, willing to accept what other people have to say, willing to compromise. I will be a team player. I recognize that you have valid opinions, that you have real talent. And recognizing that your plan is often different from God's plan. So let's talk about some practical ways that you can work on humility today. First option, let's try to do some service. You can check out this picture from actually earlier today. Uh, this is my Bible study leader, Matt. He, he got this group of people out to dig a drainage pipe at a preschool, a Catholic preschool and kindergarten. And these sisters were so grateful and it was an incredible way to spend a few hours of my Saturday morning to give that away, to recognize that what I had planned for myself was not more important than to be outside of myself and a part of something bigger than myself. Also important to eat the food that the sisters give to you afterwards. That's called the law of Christian charity. When somebody provides for you, gives you a meal, gives you food, you need to eat it. It's, it's good for you. Second thing you could do is just work on gratitude. Actually write down things that you're grateful for. I had a, a resident advisor in college who would put sticky notes up on his wall and his whole wall was just covered in things he was thankful for. You start recognizing that everything in your life is a gift, every opportunity, every person. It's a gift, put it on the wall, put it on the sticky. Finally, last tip, try this challenge. It's where when you're in a group conversation with lots of people, Try to speak fourth. Don't try to speak first, second, or third. Don't take the podium. Try to speak fourth because other people have important things to say and it helps you work on your listening. I was actually challenged this by my focus missionary in college. I don't know if you are familiar with focus missionaries, but they basically go out to live on college campuses. But he told me, this is something I think you need to work on. And I was like, what? I don't need to work on that. And it really did help me realize how much I want to jump in and offer my advice, offer what I have to say, but I don't always have to. And it's oftentimes better when I don't. The challenge for you, pray the joyful mysteries. Put down in a comment below one way you're trying to work on humility. And if you haven't already, please like our video, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support our channel, please buy a rosary at sheenrosaries.com or buy one for a friend. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for tuning in and sticking till the end of the video. From us to you through Mary.